Now let's turn to a useful application of the type of competitive market analysis we've been doing so far, understanding how taxes affect the economy. We'll try to answer two questions in particular. First, what effect do taxes have on social welfare? Second, who ends up bearing the burden of taxes? To do this analysis, let's return to the market for gas and our standard supply and demand framework. This graph shows an equilibrium price of $3 a gallon and an equilibrium quantity of 14 billion gallons a month. And it shows the consumer surplus here and the producer surplus here. Now suppose the government taxes the company selling the gasoline 50 cents a gallon. How does this impact the equilibrium? Think about it from the firm's perspective. They're now paying 50 cents more for every gallon they sell. That means their marginal cost just went up by 50 cents per gallon. So that means that this tax just caused their whole marginal cost curve to shift up 50 cents. Remember, the marginal cost curve is the supply curve. So the supply curve shifts up by 50 cents. With the tax, the equilibrium price increased to 325 a gallon, and the quantity produced has decreased to 12 billion gallons a month. What happens to social welfare? As we can see, consumer and producer surplus have both shrunk. The tax has created deadweight loss. There are units of gas for which consumers have a willingness to pay that exceeds the marginal cost of producing that unit before the tax. Without the tax, selling these units would produce surplus. But the tax stops those sales from happening, and in doing so reduces surplus and creates deadweight loss. For this reason, we say that taxes in a competitive market are inefficient. They get in the way of efficient trades that make both sides better off. The next question we can ask is, who ends up bearing the effect of this tax? This might seem like a silly question. Of course, the guy who pays the tax bears the tax. But this answer ignores the reality that markets don't take taxes lying down. The market's going to respond to the tax, and that might mean other people end up bearing some of the effects of the tax. In economics, we want to measure who bears the economic burden of the tax, not just who physically pays the bill. We call this tax incidence. Let's come back to the gas market example. We start with producers earning $3 per gallon and consumers paying $3 per gallon. Then the government imposes the 50 cent tax and we end up with a price of $3.25. So consumers bear some of the tax. They have to pay an extra 25 cents per gallon of gas they buy. This is an important point. Even though consumers aren't sending any money to the government, they have to pay more as a result of the tax. Therefore, consumers bear some of the economic burden of the tax or the tax incidence. But producers also bear some of the tax. They get 25 cents more per gallon compared to the $3 per gallon they were getting before the tax. But they also have to send a check to the government for 50 cents per gallon. So overall, they're 25 cents worse off per gallon. The 50 cent check they send minus the 25 cents extra they get from the higher price. So even though the producers are the ones who pay the tax by sending a check to the government, the economic burden of the tax, or tax incidence, is on both producers and consumers. Now there are a few rules about tax incidence you'll need to know for the AP exam. We'll review them here intuitively, and then the application video will provide graphical details. The key factor that will determine both the effect of the tax on welfare and who bears that burden is the elasticity of supply and demand. The more elastic the supply and demand, the greater the social welfare loss caused by taxes. This is because more elastic responses mean that a given price increase causes a larger reduction in units sold, and those were units that were delivering some surplus. So in more elastic markets, taxes get in the way of more mutually beneficial trades. The inefficiency of taxation is greater. We can see this in the graph as a larger deadweight loss. And in less elastic markets, taxes do not cause much of a reduction in mutually beneficial trades. Therefore, the taxes are less inefficient. We can see this in the graph as a smaller deadweight loss. We can also use elasticities to determine who will bear the burden of the tax. If demand is relatively inelastic compared to supply, consumers really want the good. Changes in price don't change demand all that much. So consumers are stuck bearing more of the tax burden. That is, since consumers are willing to buy at most any price, producers can just pass the tax onto them in the form of higher prices. 
If demand is relatively elastic compared to supply, consumers are very sensitive to price changes. A small price increase will cause consumers to stop buying the good or substitute to a similar good. So producers can't pass on much of the tax to consumers without greatly affecting the number of goods they can sell. As a result, producers must bear more of the tax burden. That is, since consumers will just leave the market if the price rises too much, producers are stuck charging about the same price and therefore can't offset their tax bill that they have to pay to the government. So if taxes are so inefficient and welfare reducing, why do we have them? One reason is that in many real world cases, the assumptions made by the perfectly competitive model we've been using might not hold. In particular, we assume that demand and supply curves perfectly represent willingness to pay and willingness to supply. If they don't, then taxes might not be so bad and can actually do good. Later in the course, we'll talk about why these curves may not represent what we think they do. Another reason for taxes is that often we don't care just about efficiency. We also care about equity or fairness. So we may be willing to live with some inefficiency or deadweight loss to make sure that resources are distributed more fairly in society. Later in the course, we'll talk about this equity efficiency trade-off and how societies deal with it.